Okay, well I stole the idea for this video from somebody else that recently released one similar and uh, I don't feel like it's really a copying because we both do sort of the same types of videos however his is for a higher end system with the Reverb G2 mine is for a middle high end or high middle end uh, you know close to high end I think it's a 3070 RTX 3070 and I use the Quest 2 headset so my settings my configurations my suggestions are very different than his normally because we have different platforms that we fly with so he was flying around and showing off his South America and I've watched a lot of his videos and South America is really an amazing place I fly down there myself a lot and so he was showing off the Orbix mesh for South America. And it got me interested in thinking about whether or not there was one for Alaska, which is where I like to spend a lot of my time buying it. Lo and behold, there is. And right now in the Microsoft Store, the Orbix mesh sceneries are on sale. It was $7, $8, something like that. And so I picked up Alaska and I picked up New Zealand because I'm well, New Zealand is Lord of the Rings, you know. I mean, and I got some scenery that adds some new uh, Lord of the Rings uh, landmarks. So I'm anxious to try that one out. But uh, this is the Alaska one. And yeah, I think I see more definition on the Orbix mesh. No frame rate hit at all. Uh, both of them, I have my trees up pretty high and my other settings up pretty high. I have quite a few on Ultra. And the frames that I'm getting are still averaging a good 40 or so frames per second, 42 frames per second sometimes. So I'm not seeing any frame rate hit. I am flying right now using the beta, the latest beta version 1.27.11.0, which was released a couple of days ago for beta testers. And so this is that version of the flight sim that uh, sim update that I'm flying under which is nice I mean it shows that the mesh scenery is compatible I think that's a good good test for it anyways but it's also good testing of the sim update which is really what I'm doing and using the NVIDIA DLSS feature which is now available and in order to accomplish what I'm doing right now, if I was to set TAA on this, my frame rates would be cut in about half. They would be seriously, seriously reduced, probably to about 25 or 26 frames per second, where the same settings on DLSS, I'm getting 40 to 42 frames per second. So DLSS for Steam VR and the Oculus Quest 2 headset makes a big difference. Um, improve the quality of the graphics? No, not so much. Uh, not really. But it definitely makes the ability to crank your graphics up um, more available to you. So I think that's, that's a benefit for sure of DLSS. I have settings on that I normally would have turned off or turned down. <laughs> so, uh, uh, let's yeah, I just noticed I uh, slightly different weather conditions. I just noticed that I got a broken cloud on the left. And I'm trying to fly roughly the same path. It's not really that easy. And, you know, you kind of wander a little bit and go off to look at something so but you can see I'm, I'm right in the same area you can see the same island down there and the same peaks in the distance and like I said to me there seems to be a bit more definition on the mesh I don't have or I don't really notice it looked like yeah, I just tested the frame rates on the mesh and at this point it looked like it was 37 or 38 and so the, uh, the terrain on the default, you know, you kind of see it fill in here and there. 
somewhat delayed sometimes and I've not really noticed that so much with the mesh. The mesh even in the distance seems to already have resolved and filled in and so you know like I said you can kind of see we're passing the same islands here I'm a little bit ahead on the left part the same islands and so you get a chance to see the same peaks in the distance and yeah, it looks like it's a little bit clearer um, again I kind of messed up by the clouds but still I think there's enough similarity here to, I mean like right there you can really see it uh, to me, there's enough s similarity in the timing here on the two flights to be able to see the difference in the two different scenery options. So, yeah, I like it. I'm anxious to check out New Zealand, and I'm definitely going to fly around a lot more up here as it's one of my favorite spots to fly. And now that I've broken down and got the De Havilland DHC-6 and Otter, I'm going to fly around a whole lot more up here than I, than I did previously. My Lord of the Rings point of interest file back in the community folder and check out New Zealand and that area and uh, decide what, what I want to fly around there if I want to try the helicopter and zoom around. That's all of the fun ones. Saruman's Tower and Sauron's Tower is kind of neat. The other ones had so good, the they don't look as good. The other two uh, point of interest, which is Helm's Deep. And uh, Gondor, I think. But they don't they don't look as good. They might have originally, but they've never been updated for the latest versions. But Sauron's Tower and Saramon's tower is looking pretty good in the, in the sim. So I'll check, we'll check them out in New Zealand there or something. So, yeah, like it says, I think the Orbix mesh loads smoother. It doesn't affect the frame rates really. The definite, I mean, there's the same peak right there. You can see them right there. We're looking at the same thing. Uh, the definition when you're up close to me seems a little bit better. But more importantly, it seems to be filled in when you get to it, as opposed to the default, which sometimes, at least in my experience, fills in as you get to it. And so it kind of ruins a little bit of the realism and the immer total immersion. So uh, well, hopefully that'll get better as uh, programming improves drivers get released for the DLSS because right now the NVIDIA driver does not support it in this sim but I'm sure once it, the sim update which I believe is due to be released August 23rd I think I read um, I'm sure that at some point after that NVIDIA will be releasing an updated driver at least I hope so it seems to have been their pattern so far all right, well, that's the Alaska Mesh from Orbix, available in the MS Store. Pretty cheap, like right now, I think, 7 or $8. If you fly around Alaska, it's worth it, I think. Hey, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the skies. I'm going to just float here a little bit more and enjoy.